1962 Chevrolet Corvette, and I love this car. And I already know what you're thinking, it's Cars and Zebras, if you love this car, well then, you must have a tiny dick. Yeah. I do. <laughs> God bless America. So let's see, what was going on in 1962? Um, we landed on the moon, Donald Trump turned 50, Soldier Boy was a top hit on the radio. Crank that song, now I mean you! Uh, and then of course this car was on the road. And if you think that this thing is gonna be one of the quickest cars we've ever had on the channel, well, I mean, you're gonna be wrong. It's quite on the opposite end, which is okay, because this thing is still Super cool. And in 1962, with the Corvette, you could only get a 327, but it came in four different flavors. Of course, the top dog being the 327 with fuel injection, and it was rated a whopping 360 horsepower. But alas, mis amigos, and very rare amigas on this channel, this car doesn't have fuel injection. As you'll see, it's a driver's car. It actually has its original 327 with over 100,000 miles, and it's never been rebuilt, so... Let's give a round of applause for the owner for bringing this thing out. <laughs> In a driver's car, this one has the base 327, rated 250 horsepower. I mean, not bad for a car this size in 1962. And think about it, what competitors did the Corvette have in 1962, especially from domestic brands? This was the final year for still the first generation of the Corvette. Ford did have the Thunderbird, but by 1962, they had tried to reinvent it a couple times, and it was in its third generation, and it was already fat as fuck. <laughs> Look at the fat car. Get out of here, fatty. Hey, Records and Zebras, we just want to say that we do not believe in shaming cars based on their weight. In fact, we believe the bigger the better. Let's get back to that base model 327 V8 in this specific Corvette. It was rated 350 pound-feet of torque at only 2,800 RPM. Pretty impressive. And I can already hear the Chevy guys, they're saying, Ooh, let me just see that stick inside the, ooh, I want to yank on it. Ooh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, there's your stick. And it just happens to be attached to a Power Glide two-speed automatic transmission. But truthfully, that makes me love this car even more. Again, this is a driver's car. Someone bought this in 1962, and they just wanted to get in, and they wanted to cruise around, hit some corners, and just have a good time. And I'm happy to see that the owner has left it as is. And really, the Power Glide's not that bad of a transmission. It doesn't suck away that much power. Unlike my ex-girlfriend. I said, don't disturb you, I'm cleaning my room! I'm not an expert on this by any means, but I think it was something like the Power Glide leeches away about 25 horsepower, Turbo 350's like 35, and the Turbo 400's about 45. I don't know. I'm not trying to make excuses here. I'm just making idle conversation. You know, kind of like when you're on a first date and you're asking what their dreams and aspirations are, what they do for work, their interests, their cup size. And following the theme of being a good driver, this thing has a set of 336 rear gears. Not great for the drag strip, but it probably gets decent gas mileage. I mean, these things only came with a 16 gallon tank, but you know, whatever. Fun fact though, you could get a 24 gallon tank as an option in 1962, but only 65 cars came with it, so if you find one, you're not gonna be able to afford it. Cause you're a poor little bitch. Welcome to another episode of Top and Bottom Comments. The top comment from the last video comes from CheeseburgerKid1329. They state, I had a 67 Cougar in my late teens. Thank God it only had a 289. If it had the 428, I probably wouldn't be alive today. Thanks for the comment, Cheeseburger Kid. I would have loved to have had a 67 Cougar when I was a teen. Meow. <laughs> The bottom comment comes from Blade Runner 25463C stating, I'm gassy. Well, okay. Uh, in my day, we didn't talk about our flatulence openly. We held it in until we exploded and we liked it. Don't even get me started on automatic headlights. Arrgh! You want to be part of a future top and bottom comments? Well, leave a comment, dummy. That's kind of how it works. Most people realize that these Corvettes have fiberglass bodies, but they might not be as light as you expect. This car with the driver sitting in it weighed in at 3,242 pounds. And then of course we have to talk about the price. The 1962 Corvette started out at $4,038. You want the automatic transmission? That's 199 bucks. And then the posi rear was 43. Most of these did come with more options, but you could get into one for 4,280 bucks. And if you adjust that amount for inflation, today 
that'd be about 43,515. In 1962, they produced 14,531 Corvettes in total, but breaking that down into specific engine options, well, that's difficult. I mean, Chevrolet was pretty inconsistent around that time. Kind of like me with my uploading schedule. 1972 Ford Gran Torino Sport. Get off my lawn. Whoa, Clint. All right, let's chill, bro. We used to stack f like you five feet high. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean, f like me? Are you talking about guys with tiny f Because my life is difficult enough already, Clint. And by 1972, the Torino was starting to struggle a little bit. The Sport now replaced the GT as the top trim package, and it came standard with the 302 V8, but... Eh, it was just a two barrel and it had 140 horsepower. Interestingly, you could still get a 429, but it wasn't the 429 of previous years. This one was a little bit weak. Uh, you know, 205 horsepower out of a 429. <laughs> but this car doesn't have the bloated 429. This one has the highly coveted 351 and nothing says good head game like Cleveland. <laughs> Am I right, my guys? <laughs> no, I knew you were a dipshit the first time I ever saw you. So again, the 429, that was rated 205 horsepower. 351 Cleveland, 248 horsepower. Not bad for 1972, and keep in mind that's net ratings. And then torque was coming in at 299 pound-feet at 3,800 RPM. And that was all with a compression ratio of only 8.6 to 1. So if you massage that Cleveland a little bit, or maybe something a little more invasive, like a good rub and tug, if that car pulls up to you at a light, you might not want to mess with it. Ever notice how you come across somebody once in a while that you shouldn't have fucked with? That's me. And Ford fans, try to control yourself. This one's got a four-speed manual. And I already know what you guys are gonna do with that. <laughs> now, if your Torino came with a 302 V8, I'll back you had a measly little eight-inch rear. <laughs> eight inches, I mean, come on. <laughs> However, if you opted for the 351 Cleveland, then you got a nine-incher. And I like that. Boy, does my ass hurt from all the guys in my construction job. And then this car specifically has 391 gears. Now guys, why don't we all just take a seat because I think we need to have an intervention with the Torino. Its weight has gotten out of control and it's worrying me because this monster with the driver sitting in it weighed exactly 4,300 pounds. The 1972 Torino Sport started out at $3,776, and if you wanted that 351 Cleveland, I mean, that was only another $130. Bucks. Four speed manual, that was about $250, and then a traction lock rear was $56. Bucks. In total, that was about $4,212, and if you adjust for inflation, today that'd be just over $30,000. Car and Driver Magazine tested a 72 Torino with a 351 Cleveland, four speed manual, and 350 rear gears. And it went 0 to 60 in 6.8 seconds. Pretty impressive for 1972. And then Cars Magazine tested one of these, but it had an automatic transmission with 350 rear gears, and it ran the quarter in 1540 at 86 miles per hour. But then the moment of truth, let's see what these cars will run today. We have Kurt Ausbaugh with his 1972 Grand Torino Sport going against Theo Diller. In the first round, it's the Ford that takes home the win, running 15.87 seconds at 87.89 miles per hour. In the other lane, the Corvette ran 16.21 at 84.47 miles per hour. Let's see what happens in round two. Redesigned Torino for that year. Unfortunately, the horsepower was downgraded from the 71, just like everyone did. Similar result in the second round, it's the Torino that takes home the win, running 15.91 seconds at 88 miles an hour. Corvette this time ran 1642 at 83.68 miles per hour. And even though the Torino officially wins the best of three, both drivers decide to run that third round anyway, so let's check it out. This uh, 1962 Corvette 
and the right going against uh, that Corvette's all original, sold new with Dave White Chevrolet, Ohio. And it's the Torino that takes home the clean sweep, running 1562 at 89.83 miles per hour. And the Corvette finished with a 1633 at 83.89 miles per hour. A huge thanks to the owners for bringing out these cars. Come on. We all know they are absolutely awesome. And I'm just going to say it, two of my favorite cars from last year's Pure Stock event. And come on, you guys. Do me a favor, hit the like button, and I can see you're not subscribed. So why not just do that, too? See you at the next one. Thank you